Okay, so pulse width modulated alternator to a internally regulated alternator. You need to change this part, a, a Denso style alternator. Uh, for instance, a 2001 uh, Dodge Dakota, Durango, the Dodge lineup, all use the, that has this front cover here that looks like that. This is an original. Here's the cheapest replacement I can find, 80 bucks. Now, to get this internally regulated, if you just buy it off the shelf, is anywhere from three to $400, okay, for the Dodge vehicle. Replacement part, this is pulse width modulated. The replacement for this to make it a one wire, a one wire, and it'll have four pins, is 16 bucks put it in place you got it yourself a one wire alternator this is an original alternator off of a two, 2001 uh, Dodge Dakota uh, Durango all the same see the configuration how it's off to the side here here is the cheapest replacement that I can find okay got it off of uh, Amazon uh, I think it was like $79 well, this is the replacement. See, it's it's more of a straight through design instead of offset. So, I got this thinking that it was the same design. It's not. So, I got to return this. We'll change it to an internally regulated alternator. Now, the replacement for this there are many replacements depending on what voltage you want. There's a GM style, okay, that'll go straight in and it has a straight connector with the four pins. There's also a Lexus style, which is a square pin, which is Toyota also. Uh, Dodge has their own. And depending on the voltages, like, you can get a replacement, okay, you can get rid of the pulse with modulated uh, regulator and you can replace it with an internally regulated one. Uh, the GM part number, if you want 14.4 volts, okay, it, the GM part number is 12582024. Okay, that'll replace this and go in here like so. If you wanted, say, a, a, a 14 volt, okay, you, wanted, you want to regulate it at 14 volts and you want a, a six second delay, uh, you would go with a Denso part number 126600-3010. Or you can go to a dash 3040 or 3361. They all have the first Denso part number 126600. It's either a 3010, a 3040, a 3361. Those will all have a six-second delay and regulated at 14 volts. You can also regulate this at 13.7 volts, which is the Denso number 12-6600-7630, okay? Those are all internally regulated regulators. If you wanted to replace the pulse with modulated for internal regulated for 15 volts, you would go to a Denso 126600-0030 or dash 0031. That'll give you 15 volts. And that's the GM uh, round connector out the side. So there's that one too for the alternator, okay? And it's it they look like this. Some of them are offset. Some of them are going to look like so, which I think this is the one for the Mini, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, the high-performance Mini one you can get at Summit or whatever. So... Uh, this is a different design than what was on the truck. I thought I would be getting this design, which is heavier unit. This is a, a lighter unit, probably less amps, but I'm not running a bunch of accessories on this truck, okay? This is just a Street Fighter truck. I'm not worried about a lot of uh, accessories. They have different, um, for instance, okay? Let's just say that this would work with this one. You would have three pins. One would be for the light, one would be for the voltage, and one would be the stepper, okay, for the field. Now, depending on 
how much voltage you want, you put a resistor or whatever, but you can just get the internally regulated for the style volt or the amount of voltage you want, okay? You just gotta do your research. There's, there's about 15 regulators that'll fit this. All have different uh, startup delays. Thank you for that. They all have different startup delays, uh, whether it be three seconds, two seconds. They have a GM one that actually puts out 15.8 volts. They have a GM one for 14.8 volts. Like I said, you just gotta do your research. Now, I will say this, depending on the part number that you use, okay, that will determine the price, okay? Now, I can get a regulator that is internally regulated for $16, and it'll fit right in here, and it'll be regulated at 14.4 volts. Okay, that's what I want. It fits a Lexus. It's going to have a square pin. It's going to have four pins. Now, if you, if you get the GM one, the GM one, they want 60 bucks because, you know, LS. LS will use the style alternator. So... Depending on the part number and style connector you want, it's going to determine the price. I hope that helps. Uh, this is what I'm finding out. This is what I've done. So there you go. Just to further give you information on these alternators, uh, here is a here is one of the replacement regulators. Okay, you can see how that works. This is the internally regulated to get rid of the pulse width modulation. That one happens to be $24. You can get it online on eBay. Now, if you, if you want to run a pulse width modulated alternator, okay, if you want to run one, here is what you need, okay, if you don't want to get an internally regulated. For the pulse width modulation, you will need one of these bad boys, okay? You can mount this to your fender, make sure it has a good ground. Here's the part number. And you'll also need the connector that goes with it, okay? So I'm using the connector right now. So this is the only part number I have for you. Now, if you look up that part number, dealing with pulse with modulated alternators, you'll find out how to wire it in and make a pulse with modulated alternator work for your vehicle if you want to go that route. Now, this will regulate it to 14.8, 14.9, okay? And to step this down, I think it's uh, 0.3 to 0.6 volts. To step it down, you'll need to add a relay. Again, there are many videos out there on doing this. Uh, the one I'm doing is just to replace this. So there you go. Let's find out what's in here. This is brand new, by the way. Bet it's just a capacitor or something. And something to take that pulse with modulated form and just give it a give it a steady signal. So this, <laughs> this changes the pulse width modulation signal into something that the alternator can use. What is this? Well, this is a capacitor, okay? This is a metallized polypropylene film capacitor. That's what that is. 
simple. Okay. Hopefully this works. I got this part online. And it was 15 bucks. It's for a Lexus. This is out of a 2001 Dodge Durango. Well, it's not out of one. It's for one. I just got to see how I'm going to install this. Supposedly this will be a one wire after I install this. So we'll see. This will sit in there like so. So I'm going to have to get a screwdriver. This will have to go in there like so. The other one had an extension here. I don't know if I gotta add that, but I'm gonna find out. I guess we will both find out. Now this doesn't bolt to anything. So now I'm wondering if it'll even work. Maybe, maybe not. So I have to go, okay, on top. So go on top. I'm gonna have to figure out this. Maybe there's a different because what's going to support that? I don't know what's going to support that. Yeah, that's kind of just floating. I don't know if I like that. I'm going to have to look that up. But if it works, it works. I'll go ahead and put this together and try it out. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It blows up, right? So this is an $80 alternator off of Amazon. Cheapest one I can find. And that one need to be soldered. It need to be crimped, but I'm not gonna solder it just yet. I still gotta test it. Uh, maybe I should put a dab on it just to make sure connection. Yeah? Not reading good? Yeah. Wow. All right, this, this is just Harbor Freight stuff. It's real low temperature. You don't want to use this for a final, but this is just a test. Now I just got to find out if it'll actually charge with one wire. So, to be continued. All right, so I want to convert a computer-controlled 
Denso alternator to a one wire. So this is the cheapest one I can find. It's off of Amazon and I, I spent 80 bucks for it. It's for a 2001 Dodge Durango. The regulator I bought for a Lexus. It's a four pin Lexus Toyota, same difference. And I soldered the terminal right there. Okay, you got to crimp and solder that. This alternator, since it's computer controlled, it actually doesn't have the stud for the for the brush holder. So what you have to do is it's it's very important. You got to ground that. Okay, if you don't ground that, this won't work. This whole system needs this ground to to complete the connection. Okay. Hold on, let me get that hooked up here. Just a tight space. All right, so the sense goes green to the power. Power goes to the power in the battery, okay? This, this is your ignition, okay? I got that to the power, to the battery. Now, what I'm going to do is to excite everything, I'm going to ground the regulator body, okay? Remember where I put that pin? And I'm just going to spin it with a drill. And this is originally a computer-controlled alternator, and now, hopefully it works, is now a single wire. Oh, I got my meter right there. Just a cheap meter. Uh, where am I going to put this, huh? So you can see it. That's the problem. Where am I going to put this? Because this is what you got to see. Let me see if I can just finagle that. All right, so like I said, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to ground this, okay? I'm just going to ground that right there. It works. Wow. Okay. Now I got a single wire that'll work without any further modifications. Now, you're, you might be asking why I did all this, okay? So, in order for it to work before, you had to have a separate control box, and then you had a, a step or down relay, and then an, another step down relay, okay? So there's a lot of wiring, and there's, there's another uh, box you have to mount on the firewall, and I think that's in my other video. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and splice it into this one. But yeah, it works. Cool. Now I don't have to buy a three four hundred dollar alternator for a single wire that'll work with a Dodge Magnum. 